I found an old post I made from when I first hit diamond. Now in this post, I explained that I've been stuck gold forever for about like six years. And I finally was able to make it into diamond after about four months of trying really, really, really hard. And I share how I was able to go from hard stuck gold to breaking into diamond with, within only a few months in this post. And I want to share with you guys today what I wrote down. I want to talk to you guys about how I've changed, you know, throughout the years I've hit masters and then now grandmasters. I, I continue to climb and I've been coaching and I've been seeing more things. So I want to share with you guys what I said back in the day and kind of what I think about it now and some more kind of thoughts on this. So here's the post. This is what it looks like. It was just a quick little Reddit post it had three little tips on it. The first tip was be mentally present. The second one is learn how to add or count would be another way to say that. Learn how to count. And then three is recognize win conditions. So there are basically three big points that we're going to break down here. Now, if you guys would like to go read the original post, I will link it below. Uh, also, here's you know the picture of it. Um, but I'm going to break this video into three points where I take each part. I talk about what I meant and I talk about how my views have developed on it and how you can use it in your own games to help you climb. So starting with one be mentally present. Now, this is the most important one. This is why it's at the number one spot. It's probably the least flattering one. It's the one that like everybody kind of knows in your soul, but it's kind of the hardest to execute. If you want to climb at something, it takes applying yourself. And what really sucks about applying yourself is it hurts. It hurts to lose. It hurts to know that it's your fault. It hurts to know that you're bad. It hurts to know that there's so much stuff to work on. It's expensive. It takes a lot of mental energy to keep going, right? It takes a lot of mental energy to, you know, lose a game and then like go in through the process of like thinking, okay, what can I change next time? And you, and it takes a lot of energy to know you're going to change something and you're still going to lose. Like it, you're not just going to change one thing and then all of a sudden fix everything. Like the process is not easy. It's hard. It takes a long time. It's expensive. It's ugly, but it takes a long time if you're thinking about it in days. So if you go queue up tonight, you know, and you're mentally present, you won't be immediately diamond. But if you're mentally present every day, then three months, you go from gold to diamond. And that seems insane. It seems insane. So the big challenge is find a way to keep yourself mentally present every day. It means have fun, right? If you're having fun, it's easier to be mentally present. Set a goal, set challenges, do things that are engaging. These are ways to keep yourself mentally present. I know for me, I used to do push-ups. I don't know why. I I've always been a very like competitive person. I've always been like, you know, a very energetic person as well. So in between games, I would just do push-ups for like, let's say I died. I I'd, maybe I'd set a rule. I'd be like, okay, every time I die, I'm gonna do five push-ups. I'm gonna have a game, you know, I died 10 times and I'm like, holy, here we go again. You know what I mean? And it kept me motivated, it kept me engaged, and just every day I would do little things like that. And every day I'd set a goal. I'm like, all right, today I'm gonna try to get this amount of CS. I'm gonna try to win lanes in this way, or I'm gonna try to do this or this this game, or I'm working on my vision this game, or I'm gonna look at my map this much this game. And just little goals. And these little things that keep you focused from the day to day after three months makes massive, massive improvements. Now, over time, this has just been more and more true. It's something that you know you get better at as you get higher ELO and as you um, learn more about yourself and become older, right? But it's something that you have to teach yourself and you have to go through. So staying mentally present, this part is definitely, I still feel the exact same about. Here I say uh, in the Reddit post that this is the most important tip for improving and climbing through ranks that you've never played in. You can't let autopilot take over. And I think that's just, it is what it is. A lot of people play on autopilot because it's easier. Um, and actually most people you see in your games will be on autopilot. That's a big reason why when you're trying to like win and improve, it doesn't make sense to type at people or flame them because they're all, they're all on autopilot. They're having fun. They're just playing easy, right? Which is great for you if you want to improve, because if you're the one improving and you're taking responsibility and you're being mentally present, you will skyrocket past your average person. That's tip one. Tip two is learn how to add. Now, this is the first part where we're getting into some real macro stuff. Now, I played a lot of Trindamir. In fact, I went from gold to diamond pretty much only playing Trindamir. I started in top lane uh, and then halfway through platinum, I swapped to mid lane. So I played only Trindamir um, in pretty much two lanes. And this is how I learned macro. I learned macro through learning how to add, as I put it. And I meant that by learning the value of things and being, being able to equate things 
uh, like in terms of gold, be able to break everything down to one currency so you can compare the value of plays. So I'll give you an example. Uh, how much is a kill worth? 300 gold, right? How much is a plate worth? 175 gold. How much is a wave worth? 105 gold. How much is a camp worth? Now this is where a lot of our laners start to get confused. Do you guys know how much Grump is worth or how many or how much Krugs is worth? Now, what's funny about this is before this video, I actually had to go write these down. So I'm gonna here, I'm gonna pull up a map and I'm gonna show you guys. Okay, so Grump is 80 gold, Raptors is 85 gold, Krugs is 109 gold, red and blue both are 90 gold, and Raptors are 75 gold. But uh, roughly, I like to view them as just 80 or 90 gold. I think using either of those numbers is about right. I've always used 80 because that's a decent ballpark. Krugs are a little more, Raptors are a little less. But once you understand what everything is worth and you understand how much minions are worth, now you can really start to understand plays and then it becomes a number game. Macro gets very simple when you can break it down to basic math because people always ask like, when do I roam? Uh, when do I not roam? Now you can ask yourself, you know, if you're choosing to stay mid for a wave or you're choosing to go bottom, well, the mid wave, you know, is worth 105 gold. Well, if they gain that and you lose that, you want to make sure, and that's guaranteed. So you want to make sure you're gaining more than 200 gold if you roam. So is the chance of the roam going to give you more gold? Is it more likely to give you more gold? So on one hand, you got 210 gold and XP in the mid lane, and then whatever the roam chances are. So then you input your own little roam chances. So, you know, maybe you think you have a 100% chance to get a double kill. Then you should go bottom. However, if you have a 50% chance to get one kill, then you shouldn't go bottom because 50% chance at 300 gold, well, that's 150 gold. That's just not worth it numerically, right? It's a numbers game. So breaking things down in terms of numbers, learning how to compare those will just automatically teach you the right macro, right? Should I back here? I don't know. What does the gold look like? Go down both scenarios and count the minions, count, count the gold. And then you have to start to think about how much like dragons are worth in different games how much heralds are worth right heralds always get two plates so those are worth like at least 350 gold when you add in like the tower pressure and whatnot so it gets a little bit tricky but learning how to count is the foundation and then as you play you start to add in the small things like well maybe your percentage guess for the gank was wrong right like if you go down for a gank you're like i'm 100 sure i get a double kill you go down there you don't get the double kill well you need to figure out like hey your percentages were wrong and then that means you have to work on your game sense if you think about like what did you miss did you not understand how strong you were do you not understand power spikes that kind of thing however for me learning to compare everything in terms of gold and break everything down to one currency helped me visualize the entire game now as i've gotten better this has been even um even more true like one example that i find in my games a lot still again playing trindamir mid is comparing a plate for the enemy raptors enemy raptors are 90 gold a plate is 175 gold. Which is more valuable? Well, raptors, if you take the enemy's raptors and they plan on farming them, you get the 90 gold and you take away 90 gold that they planned on gaining and you gain the XP and deny them their XP. So if I'm playing against a power farming jungler, the 180 gold swing, I would much rather take the enemy raptors than take a mid plate. If I'm playing against somebody who's not going to farm the raptors, so they're not necessarily relying on that, then I'll take the mid plate. Right, so the macro there is built on the numbers, denying, uh, you know, thinking about opportunity cost, all these things. It's basic math. Things we learned in elementary school, we just have to apply it to our league game. How much are things worth? That's the macro. Macro is a numbers game and nothing really else. So as time developed, this point is even more true. And as I've learned to coach, learning how to count on the map, even just counting heads and, and where people are at, is such a massive skill and this is something that will help a lot of people so looking back at this post as a more experienced player i think saying learning how to add is maybe like a little bit of a weird way to say what i was saying uh but it may help you and if it does great but if it doesn't think about it these days i like to talk about power level everybody has a power level their power level is created through their uh through the items they have the level they're at and their champion Right? And that creates a rough power level. And you want to always be able to track somebody's power level. And that, that makes macro easy, right? Because you never want to take a fair fight in League. So you just ask, like, are we more powerful? Is our power level higher? Or 
are we up a person or some other reason to take a fight or do some macro. So learning how to add and break things down in terms of gold was how I learned that skill. However, however, you can find a way to learn how to break things down and compare things in a way that makes sense. That's going to be what will teach you macro, uh, whether that's visualizing power, like a power level, or it's just counting gold. Okay, going on to the last step, the last little tip, which is recognize win conditions. Now, this is the piece that I have kept working on the most. Win conditions, um, this is something that everybody talks about. You know, if you watch any League of Legends content, if you watch any educational content, you will see lots of people talking about, hey, you have to recognize win conditions. What are the win cons? How do we win games? Win con, win con, win condition. What is it? Basically, it's understanding what it looks like to win a game, right? So let's say you're playing a game and you're playing uh, Victor mid, because I've, I've been playing a lot of Victor, and you have like a Jinx and a Lulu support. You want to think like, what's our win con? Well, your win con is team fighting. Your win con is playing slow in lane, being high CS, and then team fighting, because that's what your champions are really good at. Maybe you're playing against a uh, Nocturne jungle and you're playing against like a Pike support and Lissandra made these kind of things. Well, what's their win con? Well, their win con is like side laning, splitting you apart and getting picks. And that creates a very clear framework to work within because now you know what's good and bad based on what the champions want or don't want, right? So the Victor Jinx team, they don't want to fight. They just want to farm. So if they are even in farm, at 20 minutes, but they're 0, 0, 0 they are dominating. The opposite is also true. If Lissandra and Pike and Nocturne are able to trade one for one at level one, they are dominating, even though it kind of looks even because of the win conditions. So this kind of goes on top of the learning how to add. If you can learn how to add within the context of the win conditions, holy moly, that's when you have a really smart, intelligent player. Now, win conditions are something that you can always keep working on. As I've kept getting better and better and better, I've started to realize the people better than me understand what's going to happen before it happens better than I do because they're thinking about the game more in-depthly. So it's something that I'm still working on to this day. Now, the way that I would recommend working on this is kind of in levels. First, you wanna ask what your champion does and how your champion fits within a game. You know, and that's like what the iron and bronze players are doing. And then you want to ask what your opponent does in the game. How do they win? What's their win condition? How do they beat you in lane? How do they snowball? How do they carry? That's, you know, that's our bronze and silver players. And then you start to ask about the people around you. So if you play mid lane, the most important for you is your jungle. It, uh, if you play ADC, your most important is your support. If you play support, it's your ADC slash mid laner, that kind of thing. And you kind of ask like, how do my teammates want to win? And then you do that for the rest of your teammates. And then you do that for the enemy team. And you kind of just go through those steps over and over and over again. Like, how do I want to win? How does my opponent want to win? How does our teams want to win? How does the enemy team want to win? And as you get more in depth and you see further and further down the future, you start to get better and better at this win condition thing. And this will tell you if things are good or bad without having to actually count the numbers or without, you know, before the game even starts, you can tell where you want to go, what you want to do, how you want the game to look. And this is one of the most important skills. Now, back when I wrote about this in the Reddit post, I talked about understanding wind conditions so that you could dodge. Because, you know, if you have like a really poop team, then like you should just dodge it. Now, my opinions have changed on this a little bit. My new opinion is you should dodge games that don't sound fun because games that aren't fun make you not mentally present. Back in the day, I would say, um, you know, when I first hit Diamond, I would say dodge games that you don't think that you can win, which is relatively the same. It's just sort of a different change of philosophy, but it's a, the same idea. So when you're working on win cons and you decide like, holy moly, I have zero idea how we could possibly win this game. You shouldn't play it. So you should dodge. And in the post I talk about, it's better to take the minus five LP, the minus 10 LP, uh, than taking the minus 25 and losing the MMR and then spending 30 minutes doing something you don't like, right? Or a game that you know that you wouldn't enjoy. My philosophies have shifted a little bit on the win condition stuff, but it's the thing that I've worked on the most since I was a diamond for a dirty diamond dog. And these days, it's one of the biggest things. I often tell people the difference between me at my peak when I was like Grandmaster, I was like seven games away from Challenger. And those like consistent Challenger players is the Challenger players, they just know. They just know what's going to happen. They know when it's going to happen. 
more consistently um, and more depthly than I do. They know how the matchups go better. They know how their teammates do better. They know the jungle stuff, especially the guys with really big champion pools. Um, sometimes it can be different for one tricks, but I'm getting into a rant now, so I will start to wrap it up. I appreciate you guys watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely got a very good kick out of reading this post. It's from three years ago when I finally hit diamond. I was like, wow, it's really hilarious seeing how people can, how people develop and the things they write along the way. So where are you guys at in your journey? I encourage you to journal where you're at. Uh, drop them in the comments below. Have you hit a new rank this season? How's the end of season going? How do you think, you know, what have you learned? And then write something that you think you'll have to look back on in the future. I appreciate you guys watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.